I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do marketing for your vacant rental property uh, by using technology, leveraging the technology that we have available so that you don't have to, um, you a landlord, don't have to be out showing the property all the time. Right now we're in April 2020. We're in a very challenging times. We're in the middle of the coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. There's uh, orders for shelter at home. And it's just people have to go out to do the you know, necessary, necessary things, uh, get what they need from stores. But really, people should be staying home, staying safe with their families, and not exposing themselves or others to uh, you know, get an infection. So uh, very timely, I was going to be doing a, a video on marketing anyway, regarding how to how to take advantage of all these resources that we have, especially with online marketing. A lot of resources that uh, people could use in order to effectively market their available rental, to uh, expose that to the public, but also to attract a quality tenant that suits their needs. So I'm not gonna talk too much about the, uh, the virus stuff. I just wanna uh, give you an overview on all the different things that you could do, especially low cost or no cost, and then also in the spirit of safety and not being out and not being exposed um, to avoid contact with, with people directly. Plus, it is also uh, an underlying benefit is that it is effective as far as productivity. So you're able to do more with less time and not waste time uh, for either the landlord or the potential renters. So thank for thank you very much for being here. Let's get started. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to talk mostly about uh, video because that's one huge advantage that we could all do right now in getting a property ready for rent. So I'm going to give you my um, overview of my process and how I'm currently maximizing the the marketing exposure that I'm getting for rental properties. And I'm in Sonoma County, California. Okay. Um, one a video right now because it is a challenge for people to go out and look at uh, properties and we don't want to have people uh, doing open houses or showings or having the, the leasing agents out doing open houses trying to uh, make the best use of the time and resources that we have available so uh, what I've started doing for the past couple weeks is video tours and this is just with the with the cell phone with the mobile phone if you have a smartphone with the camera you could do this um, do a video tour, actually walk through, uh, some of mine are five minutes up to 10 minutes, just going and taking the time to point things out that you wouldn't be able to get in a photo. If um, Now granted, also take photos, but with a video, you could actually talk through it, talk about the crown molding, you could talk about there used to be a wall right here and this was taken down to open it up. This um, used to have cabinets here that were taken down and now it's a a bar area so you could talk about those things you could talk about the neighborhood you could talk about um, what makes it desirable okay take the time to, to point those out and by doing video the key is or the benefit is that so many people have mobile phones now and they're home <laughs> so they're not out driving around they're not at a physical workplace a lot of them so they're home Wi-Fi they could actually watch the video first before they decide to take the next step and I'll talk about the 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 process for applying a little bit later so one it's video use your mobile home mobile phone and record a video now once you have that video you could upload it to YouTube no cost no charge upload it if you don't have a YouTube account uh, sign up for Google or Gmail and then you could create a YouTube account it's all part of the same thing and you could actually do it <coughs> excuse me um, Upload it directly from your phone wirelessly, but if you have the connection, you could hook it into your computer, upload that photo, and then uh, publish that. Then you'll get a link, and then you could share that link. One, it'll be running on YouTube anyway. Now, YouTube is the second, uh, last I checked, second largest site for search anyway, so it's going to be published. You could put in key, key tags in there, keywords, so people are looking for rentals in Santa Rosa, for example. Your video might just show up just based on regular search, plus you get to share it. And I'll talk about the social media and the other platforms in just a second. So once you have that video on there, you get a link, a code. You can send it by text message. Uh, somebody's interested in your property, like, yep, here's a video tour. Please take a look at it. They could get it on their phone, click it, 
watch YouTube on their mobile phone. So it's a great, beautiful age that we're in as far as technology goes. They could see it. And then you could also encourage the prospective uh, renter, the prospective tenant, the person who's inquiring about your property, have them go drive the neighborhood. Um, have Drive uh, on their own time, their own accord. They could go through after driving through a neighborhood and watching the interior walkthrough um, a tour, that person is going to know whether or not they want to be in that neighborhood and it meets their, their satisfaction or what they're looking for. Okay, I'm going to say a good 9 out of 10 right there. Now, there's going to be some uh, you know nuances, some details that they have to talk about as far as leasing, uh, leasing terms, qualifications, etc., but the actual process. But if, if somebody actually takes the time and drives through a neighborhood and they see photos or they see a video walkthrough, that should give them a really good idea if that's going to be the right place for them or not. Because if it's not, no harm, no foul. That's exactly what you want to do. You, it's a filter process, so you could select, um, go through a selection process. So if people drive out there and they realize, hey, that it looked good, but across the street it's a you know mobile home park or industrial or there's a car lot there, and it's not the neighborhood that they want to be in, then you you accomplish the goal, and they also know the prospective uh, renter also knows that it's not going to work out for them. Mission accomplished. On to the next. Somebody else. So it's uh, being able to leverage and use use time effectively. Uh, also, that same video, you could upload it directly to Facebook. No charge for that as well. You could put it on your personal account, uh, personal profile. It does take a little while. It has to process. And then Facebook also goes through a, an approval process. So it'll let you know your video has been reviewed, it's published, and now it's live. So once you have there, you could um, share that with all your friends on Facebook. But if you have a Facebook page, which is like a business page, or uh, you have the ability to actually pay for advertising. So not only could you upload that video onto Facebook, but you could go through and set a budget and you can do a targeted. You want to hit a five mile radius from your city. You want to hit a zip code. You want to um, caution, stay away from um, <laughs> age narrowing down your target based on age because that could be a fair housing issue and um, it'll recognize facebook's really smart their system's really smart and they will um, they'll actually tell you it's like hey if it has to do with housing then you can't put you know i only want people from 20 to 30 years old because age is a protected class and you don't want to get into hot water regarding age discrimination even though that's um, the parameters that you put into your uh, advertising so word of caution there but once you have it on there, you could do a paid advertising. You could spend $5, $10, $25. You could hit a wide range. You could potentially hit thousands of people. Now, also within Facebook, you it's linked up now with Instagram. So you could actually be running a an ad, a promotion for your video or your, your advertisement for your available rental. And it could also cross-platform. It could go onto Instagram as well. And that's a paid promotion. So very cool. Something that you should look into. If you don't know how to use it, connect with somebody who does um, actively do advertising on on Facebook and Instagram. Um, all right, so those are two big ones to be able to use your videos. Okay, I highly recommend it. It takes time, but it's well worth it because you could just use it, use it, use it, reuse it. Okay, top sites for um, inquiries. Now we have... I'm going to guess about 10 <laughs> have that board back there with available rentals We're about 10 available units and I uh, usually run right around that time right around that number at any given time so I'm doing this on scale always all these properties times all these different things that we could do at one time now a ton of inquiries come in believe it or not some people don't <laughs> don't believe me but Craigslist it is a free again no cost for this go on Craigslist publish it in the housing and you this one's video uh, photos it doesn't have the capability to upload your video so you're still going to need to take photos make them the best quality that you can take the time to edit those photos if you can there's online editors uh, google uh, within the google system there's actually google photos and you could go in there and you could actually edit your photos on there make them brighter you know like that background it's really really dark um, because i have lights on me right now um, but if you have a photo and it's you just don't have enough uh, light or brightness in there you could actually adjust the photos brighter add some contrast make the colors pop out 
do not misrepresent the place but make it look make it shine in its best light um, so that's a tip there regarding photos. Once you get on Craigslist, I believe it's 22 or 24 photos. I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe it's 24. And you could upload a lot of photos plus a detailed description. And that's free. Now, the problem with Craigslist is that it's so busy. Uh, if you post, say, 8 o'clock in the morning, that'll show up as a new, po new post and you'll get top rankings. And thankfully, people are awake at that hour and people are on Craigslist looking for rentals. But as the day goes on, all these new people, if you're in a competitive uh, environment or a large area, <coughs> then uh, there's going to be a lot of competition. New ads are going to come in over yours, and eventually yours will go down to the bottom of the list. So if you want to get the best uh, traction on Craigslist, I would recommend at least once a day uh, deleting the old post and then publishing a brand new post so that you appear the next day at the top of the list as well. Now, if you're in an area, rural area, and... There's not a lot of uh, available rentals in that area. Then that one post may stay up there within that first page search for days if there's not a lot of activity. But where I am in Santa Rosa, uh, population is 160, 170,000 people in their thousands and thousands of homes. There's just a lot of activity on there. So within a given day, uh, somebody who posts something brand new, it could go down to maybe second or third page results if there's a lot of activity. All right. So that's a tip on Craigslist, but it is, it's free. Uh, you're going to get a lot of inquiries. Some of them are going to be great. Some of them are, are not. Um, while I'm on that topic, how do you screen inquiries? Respond to everyone that you possibly can and try to have a dialogue. Um, see if you can schedule a, a phone call, at least reply. And then with these inquiries as they're coming in, because you have a link now, thank you for your inquiry. I appreciate the interest. Right now we are doing you know, limited contact, trying to stay in, try to keep everyone safe. Here's a link to the video tour. Please view it first and then drive the neighborhood. If you're still interested after watching the video and driving the neighborhood, please reach out to me and we could have a further discussion. Uh, plus it gives you the opportunity to ask questions. Okay, uh, that's tenant selection, tenant screening process. The rental application process is uh, another topic. That's another video. Uh, so Craigslist one, number two is Zillow. And Zillow is the, the Mac Daddy. It's the mother of uh, real estate websites now. And uh, several years ago, they actually joined, partnered with Trulia, which is also a big site. Now, the key here is when you go on Zillow, you do the listing once. I use the property manager site. Uh, so there's a Zillow rental manager, but there's Zillow public access. So when you go in, you could actually say, if you're the property owner, I'm the landlord, I'm the owner, and you could set up an account then you have access to upload your photos, rearrange them any way you like, and then add descriptions. Um, Zillow actually gives you the ability to add a video as well, which is really cool. You just drop in that link and it, it'll have a video uh, option. Um, what else does Zillow have? Zillow has, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but they also have rental applications. So within the Zillow network, they have a system where the people who are shopping on Zillow, so to speak, for all the available uh, properties in the area, they could actually submit their application and have it on file so that uh, if you enable that application feature, you could actually have pre-screened um, pre -screened potential tenants already and you will have their contact information. The other thing about Zillow is because it's a search engine, it's a hub for the renters, they're able to put in their profile and sometimes you'll get the lead, it'll already tell you their occupation, where they're looking, income and then credit score as well whether they not whether or not they have any pets and their availability for viewing a property okay so zillow is awesome now once you uh, upload your listing to zillow and hit publish it will automatically um, send it over it syndicates the information over to trulia and it goes over to hot pads as well and um, as far as i know it goes to other affiliated websites as well that are rental websites but all under within them the Zillow umbrella, but Zillow is the hub. So between Craigslist and Zillow, that's our top um, source of inquiries. There's another one that I don't use very often, and uh, I just having received quality leads, I, I don't think I've had any anything that actually converted into a tenant moving in, but apartments.com, and I'm sure there's rent.com out there, and it's just different searches here locally. This I haven't had very much success with that one, but you could just look 
apartments for rent, homes for rent in Santa Rosa, homes for rent in Sonoma County. Look at the sites that come up and anything that's on there, especially if it's free, you could go in and log in. Now, there are some sites where you do have to post. You have to pay to publish a post. So it's uh, it could be worth it for the, the right person. But Craigslist, Zillow, no charge. All right, getting into some of the other um, other sites. Instagram, uh, if you are active on Instagram and you have a following, you have connections, you could post your photos. You could do up to 10 photos, as a matter of fact. You could do a video, which is a short video, uh, up to one minute. Talk about it, maybe provide photos, maybe provide a um, link. You, you can't link directly through, through Instagram, but you can put the URL and somebody, if they wanted to copy and paste, they could do that. So you could give um, other instructions to Instagram and it has a cool search feature as well. If you get to use the hashtags, um, you could put in Sonoma County rentals or Santa Rosa rentals, Roner Park, and you might be able to, uh, somebody might be able to find that. All right, moving along. I'm at 16 minutes now. Instagram, Facebook, we talked about. LinkedIn, or I'm sorry, backing up, Facebook. Within Facebook, it's a beast. There's so much potential there. There are Facebook groups. So you could find a, um, like myself, I started a Facebook group four years ago or so. We're at 10,500 members as of now. So slowly built up over time, but now it's a, it's a beast in its own right. It has a life of its own. So over 10,000 members in that and it's active community rentals in Sonoma County and people could post there. It's all about available rentals, helping landlords and tenants find each other. Okay. That's dedicated within Facebook. Um, and there are other groups as well. There's going to be like your Facebook Craigslist, um, buy and sell, all sorts of groups. Take your time, search the groups, find some that are appropriate, read the community rules, you know, see what the, the admins have, uh, the administrators of that group have posted as far as the group rules. You don't want to go in and um, uh, not follow etiquette or follow the rules if you don't know. So just take your time or reach out to the admins and ask if it's okay. If, is it okay to publish available rentals on this uh, site or not? Uh, mine, Sonoma, rentals in Sonoma County, It's that's strictly it. Um, if somebody posts TVs and cars, they get deleted. If they keep spamming, then they're completely blocked from, from the group. Trying to maintain it clean and um, clean and respectful and on point. Um, there's also Marketplace in Facebook, which is huge. Now, that is a free-for-all marketplace. That's from cars, uh, personal items, furnishings, and rentals. So when you go in there, you can actually put in uh, properties for rent and it goes within the Facebook marketplace. And the cool thing about Facebook is uh, both between groups and the marketplace, people message you directly. So make sure that you're, if you're going to be in there, then you participate and you're active and you're able to uh, respond to the inquiries that are coming in because, um, which is a, a benefit and a downside. I post in a number of groups, including marketplace. I get so many inquiries, I admit I do not get to respond to everyone all the time. It's just I'm on the road and right now I'm working late. So um, I it's a challenge for me to keep up on those, but I put in instructions. Please call the leasing office or please call the leasing agent at this number just because um, it's, uh, how can I put it? <laughs> you do one thing uh, to get a certain result and then you just, not able to follow up on it. So just make sure that you can follow up on those uh, inquiries. Um, LinkedIn, don't forget about this one. LinkedIn is still powerful, especially when it's, it's a professional network. If you're active on LinkedIn, you could go in and publish it. You never know who's gonna be on the other end, and especially with uh, professionals. They, they could post that, they could pass it along, and they could communicate directly on linkedin.com. It's a professional network. Next one, don't forget nextdoor.com. Now this one, they do not like, that group does not like self-promotion. So be mindful of the group, go in and uh, there is a real estate section. You might find a classifieds in there. And then they have, um, they have neighborhood, I forget what they're called, leaders who moderate the group. So if something's not okay, somebody's gonna jump in, but uh, that's a very, it's a very big, network also no charge on that one what i love about next door is that they do a really good job with email marketing and they send out email broadcast to all the members so if you're a trending a topic in there it's going to go to potentially thousands and thousands of people in my area northern santa rosa if i post something i could click the neighborhoods that i want my post to appear in 
having conversations among neighbors, but if you put something in there, it could get a lot of attention if it's a top post, and I could get upwards of 10, 15,000 uh, people reach as it goes through the email. So it's another way to get inside the email box. Speaking of email inbox, email marketing, I love email marketing. If you have, uh, say you run a business or uh, you've built up an email list over time, you could do this just within your Yahoo or Gmail, but um, be careful not to spam people because there's spam laws. But email marketing, if you use a service like MailChimp, Constant Contact, um, there's some other email marketing programs out there where you can actually build a professional email list that is compliant with the Can Spam Act. I think it was, uh, oh, 2003, <coughs> excuse me. But there's a Can Spam Act, which we all know what spam is, uh, unsolicited email, and it could actually have a criminal offense if you do it. Uh, with bad intentions and you don't know the law. So um, use a trusted email source. There are some free ones out there. I know MailChimp, MailChimp, like a chimpanzee and his monkey, is a service and constantcontact.com is a paid service, but it's professional and they've been around a long time. I was doing email marketing going back to like 2004, 2005 when email, when email was still fairly new. All right. Uh, moving on to the next one, Neighborhood Mailer, which is just straight paper USPS snail mail. You could get um, you could get lists from the county records who the uh, the neighbors are. I do small small scale campaigns, but if there's a property that's available, hit the neighbors, which are probably going to be 15 to 20 households, and you want to send them directly to the household or to the property owners, just depending uh, depending on your target. We could say, hey, neighbor, just want to let you know about this available rental here in your neighbor neighborhood. You could potentially choose your next neighbor. OK, so don't forget about paper. There's about 50 cents postage. And the beauty of paper snail mail is that you could get a really good uh, response rate, especially if you take the time with the pen and you handwrite somebody's address. People don't get as much uh, stuff in the mail anymore. So if it looks handwritten, it looks personal very good chance that they will open it and you will have their attention. Uh, so neighborhood mailers work very well for me. Uh, for rent sign, you could do a post or you, there's some basic ones that you could go to Home Depot, possibly Office Depot, and just get a for rent sign, stick it in the front yard, make sure you have your phone number on there, and that'll let um, the neighbors know that that property is for, for rent. The one downside with putting up a sign that says for rent in front and there's no cars parked in the driveway or in the garage, is that uh, somebody with bad intentions, you could attract people, the looky-loos, who will uh, know that the property is vacant. So always, if you, if a property is vacant and it has a full rent sign, it might invite, invite people to come trespass, look inside the windows, go around the side, and depending on your neighborhood, that's your call, but that's my advice, my warning. If you put up a sign, people will know that it's uh, possibly vacant and go snooping around. Um, that's a lot of information. I'm at 23 minutes now. This is longer than I expected. Lastly, I want to talk about online applications. So if somebody drives a neighborhood, they see your video, they um, see the photos, you have your marketing description, your minimum requirements, your leasing terms to screen out the people who you do, do not want and the people, it helps select the people who find the property that they're looking for. So if they have five German Shepherds, Great Danes, and you have a small pet policy, they know it's not for them. So it'll help you screen them out. But if you find that person, we're like, this property looks good, they drove the neighborhood, they saw the video, they wanna move forward, what's the next step? Well, you could actually do online applications. There are a number of um, services out there where online rental application, if you wanna keep it simple, get a PDF rental application. You could download free stuff online, you could buy them, uh, but they're, generic rental applications that you could have and just send them out directly through email to somebody again right now in this shelter in place thing people are going to be home a lot of people have printers at home some do not so it's you're going to have to figure out if you could do a truly online submission or if they actually have to print out paper fill it out and send it back to you but the cool thing is with technology again avoiding contact uh, you could collect documentation by text message or by email and with mobile phones, because they have the, the camera feature, 
they could take a photo of their driver license ID, they could take a photo of their income documents, they could take a photo of that application if they need to, so that you could process it and make a decision before you actually go out and meet somebody in person. And this is all in the spirit of maintaining this distance, the social distancing, avoiding personal contact. We don't, uh, for the health and safety of everyone, we don't want people to be, you know, come in contact and, and get sick. So that's a lot of information. I'm Chris Sanchez. This is Sonoma Views. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it to the very end of this video. If you would like to receive future videos regarding this content, real estate, property management, or restaurant reviews, I have a lot of fun with that. Click subscribe. You'll get a notification when I post a new video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my absolute best to respond to all the comments that I get on these videos. Cheers.